There she is. GLC 300 has been our most popular. I also want to call it a bread and butter model for the last couple of years. It appears to be one of those cars that just checks all the boxes. We're talking about price point, size, maneuverability, looks. It is basically replaced its sedan counterpart, the C300, up to this point in that space. It's a little higher off the ground, has plenty of trunk space in the back, good sized back seat, very maneuverable, depending upon how you have the car equipped, anywhere from about 49,000 to maybe say 55, which is a comfortable spot in price point these days, optioned very well and very comfortable and very, very enjoyable to drive. Essentially an elevated C-Class. I mean, it's amazing. It uh, it was such a simple concept in some ways from Mercedes. When you look back to them redesigning the C-Class in 15, uh, doing the GLC in 16, it was such a it was kind of such a smart idea to come up with the the idea of basically building a sport utility on the C-Class platform. And for so many buyers, uh, especially in this market, I think in the U.S., with how uh, how how SUV driven of a market that it really is in the states. Uh, this vehicle, it's just, it's been huge for the brand. Uh, it's been our best seller in the U.S. for quite a few years in a row now, really since it came out. Um, and it's it's great because it's at, a, it's at a really, really attainable price point. I mean, typically GLC is right around 50000 And it's so much vehicle. I mean, it's definitely one of those those cars, too, that I know with, with, with a lot of my clients. Um, seeing it from the outside, it will give you a little bit of that kind of more smaller, compact feel in terms of parking and, and like usability on the road. But once you're inside, it's really roomy. Uh, they did a great job with the design of this vehicle in terms of how much space that they sort of shelled out of it. So for a lot of folks that I have that are maybe coming out of something a little more kind of larger midsize SUV, I've had a lot of people get into a GLC and be really impressed with the space. So I think it's, I think it's kind of that really good sweet spot for a lot of buyers, kind of like Scott mentioned. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that really makes it shine is like Anthony mentioned, it is an elevated C-Class. It, truly, it is. You can take the floor mats out of a C and put them in a GLC because they fit. But that also gives you the handling, the maneuverability, the enjoyable drive that you would get from a sports sedan, but in that elevated SUV-style vehicle. So you truly aren't giving anything up when you move to the more elevated vehicle. None whatsoever. Very enjoyable to drive. Yeah, I know. Whenever I was looking inside, I mean, it, yeah, it looks huge inside. Very roomy. It does. It, de it, it definitely gives you a lot of space. But again, with that kind of more compact uh, footprint, you know, and that's something I think big with a lot of Mercedes sort of smaller SUVs now. Uh, not only to talk about just, just, just about it with the GLC, but even like if you look down to our uh, GLA, you know, our, our most compact size. And that's something where when they recently redesigned the GLA this past year, they did a great job doing the same thing, hollowing a lot more space out of the inside, the the design of the new interface with the Mercedes user experience, the uh, just just kind of the way that they elevated the floor, lowered, or excuse me, a, a, like, a, like lowered the floor, elevated the ceiling. Uh, they just, they, they've been doing a lot of things from a design standpoint, Benz has, when it comes to uh, shelling out a lot of additional space. And again, kind of like I was talking about with, with on the GLE, even the use of materials is big, you know, using more aluminum, saving weights, uh, using some of these newer transmissions and, you know, more efficient engines, all this stuff helps, you know, when you start shaving weight and you pull more power out of, you know, turbochargers and smoother transmissions. I mean, it's making just a faster, quicker, just overall more fun to drive vehicle. And yet you're getting extra space. You know, it's mm -hmm. just how technology is changing from an engineering standpoint, too. It's not just the screens. It's the tech and how they actually are building the cars. And someone else to touch on about that when we talk about materials, it's important to know where those materials in the car are. The aluminum pretty much is in the body, the uh, the door panels, that sort of thing, hoods uh, across the across the, the car like that. But in still inside, inside the body shell, the part that protects you, that's still the low carbon, high strength steel we've always been known for. You put that together with a full time all wheel drive system and that turbocharged four cylinder, which does 255 horsepower, which to put that in perspective is considerably more than a mid eighties IROC Camaro at only 188. You get a lot of power on the ground on all, on all four wheels, which not only gives you traction in all kinds of weather, but actually propels you very quickly to give you that quick snappy performance 
that uh, that most folks want. And you combine that with a uh, very maneuverable, good size vehicle. It's a one two punch and a very hard combination to walk away from. Awesome. 